Okay, hitters, so in today's history, we're basically going to go over what a LERP is. Now, we are also going to touch base on what a LERSER is, what a RASTA unit is, and if there is indeed a difference between a LERP unit, a LERSER unit, or a RASTA unit. So, to begin with, let's go over what these acronyms mean to these units or the nomenclature of these units if you're tracking with me on that. So a LERP unit, Lima Romeo Romeo Papa, pronounced LERP, L-U-R-P, is a long range reconnaissance patrol. A LERSER unit, long range reconnaissance surveillance and report, and to round it out, a RASTA unit would be that of reconnaissance surveillance and target acquisition. So all three of these units are actually a cog in the machine of the long range reconnaissance patrol. However, depending on when you served in the military would depend on what unit you were actually with. And basically what I mean by that is basically if you served the United States Army, it would depend on what years you actually served would depend on if you were referred to as LERP, LERSER, or RASTA. I can tell you this though, during my time with RASTA, about 90 days prior to that, that unit was actually considered a LERSER unit. And as the squadron's RASTA unit, we were more times than not just referred to as the LERP unit. And that's how we liked it because it gave mad props to the LERPs, those badass pipe swingers in the Vietnam era. And, you know, I've stated this in, in many, many of my histories that it was, I mean, it basically got my dick hard watching those hitters, those LERPs from NAM walking around base and their ODs with all their badges and knowing they were LERP. You're damn skippy, man. It made me very proud when the squadron commander would refer to us as LERPs instead of RASTA. Okay, so tracking on. So specifically, when I was doing this history and the build that follows, I was specifically thinking of the LERPs in Vietnam. That's specifically what always comes to mind, and it's probably because of their tradition and my tradition as being a reconnaissance scout that that made me want to focus more on them. But it would be doing all of you guys an injustice if I didn't run down a history that dates back way before them. Who? So basically, the concepts of scouts date back to the origins of warfare itself. And with that being said, I'm not saying that scouts are the only ones involved in a long-range reconnaissance patrol because that's nonsense. There are many other MOSs, military occupational skills, that actually track on this, as well as different divisions within a military or the Department of Defense, for instance, the Marine Corps, of course they got their own, Air Force got their own. So the concept of scouts date back to the origins of warfare itself. However, in modern times, these specialized units evolved from examples such as Rogers Rangers. If you don't know who that character is, you need to go ahead and Google that because that's, that's pretty important stuff right there, especially if you belong in my line of pedigree. It's Rogers Rangers in Colonial British America, the Levat Scouts in World War One, the Long Range Desert Group, which I have definitely mentioned them in my reconnaissance videos that I have done, and the SAS, which I have three history and builds on those hitters in the SAS. And basically, they recon the Western Desert Campaign and Northwest Europe. Similar units such as Force 136 in East Asia and the Special Light Infantry units in the Finnish Army during the Second World War. And those Finns back in the day, I'm not saying that today they're not, but come on. Back in the day, you could not, it was hard to fuck with the Finnish Lurser who or Lurp who, uh, in the Second World War. So, uh, a lot of shouts out to the Finns there, who really, they gave a bigger blueprint to Germany than anyone else. However, the Finns were known for their lurser capability 
back in the Second World War. Post-war, the role was carried out in various North Atlantic treaty organizations. What does that mean, peeps? You know what that means. It means NATO. We covered it in the ISAF video in history. So, basically, North Atlantic Treaty Organization and British Commonwealth countries by units that could trace their origins to these wartime creations such as the British SAS, Australian Special Air Service Regiment, and the New Zealand's Special Air Service. United States Army Rangers, Long Range Surveillance Teams, and Reconnaissance Surveillance and Target Acquisition, which we've already covered, basically LERP, United States Army Rangers, hey, yeah, we do a little lurser out there, as well as stated Rasta, and basically we got that blueprint, the Lurser, Lurp, Rasta, all those blueprints really came from the hitters decades, decades, and decades ago. Uh, I know that a lot of people think that you say Lurp, same with myself, you think automatically of the Vietnam hitters, who, which I've already stated, this is kind of what uh, I'm going for, but again, I have to throw out everything in this history, however... They were far from the first LORS unit, LORP unit, who all the lessons that we have learned since the beginning of warfare has developed into what we now know as LORP, LORSER, or RASTA. Who? So, like we've been talking about, right, the use of scouts is ancient, or the use of LORPs are ancient. However, during the French and Indian War, basically 1754 to 1763, the techniques of long-range reconnaissance and raidings were significantly implemented by the British in colonial America. The British employed the American Major Robert Rogers, and if you hadn't Googled him by now, I'll go ahead and let you know, that is basically the big kahuna of the United States Army Rangers. Point of fact, when I went to training to be a reconnaissance scout as well as an airborne ranger, the first document that we received were the standing orders by Captain slash Major Robert Rogers. Who he had that much of an influence on the United States side as well, I'm sure, on the British side of LERP activity. So, uh, tracking on with that in mind, the British employed the American Major Robert Rogers to make long-range attacks against the French and their Indian allies along the frontiers of the British colonies and New France. The achievements of Major Roberts' dozen companies of approximately 1,200 troops during the French and Indian War were so extraordinary that this doctrine, Standing Orders, Rogers Rangers from 1759, became the cornerstone of the future U.S. Army Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol units, including the U.S. Army Rangers, and indeed, the Special Operations Light LORP Light Infantry community as stated some of the first in fact it was not one of the first it was the first document that we reviewed during my time when i went to school as a reconnaissance scout and airborne ranger so with that being said and i know this history might be getting a little long but to hell with that because all you guys know if i'm gonna do something I'm going to do it damn right the first time. Who? So with that being said, let's take a look at the Rogers Rangers standing orders from 1759. Don't forget nothing. Have your musket clean as a whistle, hat scored, 60 rounds, powder and ball, and be ready to march at a minute's warning. When you're on the march, act the way you would if you were sneaking up on a deer. See the enemies first. Tell the truth about what you see and do. There is an army depending on us for correct information. You can lie all you fucking want when you tell other folks about the rangers, but don't ever lie to a ranger or officer. Don't never take a chance. You don't have to. When we're on the march, we march single file. Far enough apart so one shot can't go through two men. If we strike swamps or soft ground, we spread out abreast so it's hard to track us. When we march, we keep moving till dark so as to give the enemy the least possible chance at us. When we can't, half the party stays awake while the other half sleeps. If we take prisoners, we keep them separate till we have had time to examine them so they can't cook up a story between them. Don't ever march home the same way. Take a different route so you won't be ambushed. No matter whether we travel in big parties or little ones, each party has to keep a scout 20 yards ahead 
20 yards on each flank and 20 yards in the rear so the main body can't be snuck up and surprised and wiped out. Every night you'll be told where to meet if surrounded by superior force. Don't sit down to eat without posting sentries. Don't sleep beyond dawn. Dawn's when the French and Indians attack. Don't cross a river by a regular ford. If somebody's trailing you, make a circle. Come back into your own tracks and ambush them. The folks that aim to ambush you. Don't stand up when the enemy's coming against you. Kneel down. Hide behind a tree. Get some cover, dummy. Let the enemy come till he's almost enough to touch. Then let him have it and jump out and finish him up with your freaking hatchet. So there you have it, the standing orders of Rogers Rangers from 1759, and to my knowledge, this document still gets handed out in LERP school, Ranger school, you name it, any high-speed unit that is involved in long-range reconnaissance and patrol will be handed this document, and trust me, at least if you are a Ranger, you better freaking know this as well as the Ranger Creed. Okay, to finish it up, actually, there is so much more I could talk about, but I know the history is getting a little long because we've got the build coming up next. Too. However, right now I want to talk about different units from other countries because I have mentioned the United States, even though I'm aware that I mentioned the SAS and other reconnaissance forces. Now, what I'm going to do is put these in alphabetical order. In my opinion, yes, I believe they are, are the best of the best of the best. But I'm not going to line them up like that. Because huh? I don't want you cupcakes getting soft on me and go report me to my congressman. Huh? So, let's start out with Australia. During the Second World War, the 21st North Australian Observer Unit was tasked with patrolling the remote areas of Northern Australia on horseback. The Canadian Rangers conduct long-range surveillance or sovereignty patrols in the sparsely settled areas of northern Canada. Although part of the Canadian Army, they are an irregular military force. Denmark, an all-volunteer unit within the Danish Home Guard that is now called Special Support and Reconnaissance Company, basically the SSR. In Finland, long-range patrols were especially notable during World War II as states the 4th Detachment Battalion was basically a command of four different long-range patrol detachments. And here's a fact for you. Not to say that I wasn't impressed enough when I was researching Finland and their long-range patrol units in World War II. Former President of Finland, and I'm sure I butchered that pretty much, served and specially designed a Jaeger company called Detachment Tornai in the Finnish 1st Infantry Division. He also became a U.S. citizen and entered the U.S. Army Special Forces. He gave important knowledge and instruction in long-range patrolling during the Vietnam era and was declared MIA during the Vietnam War in 1965 until his remains were found and were buried in the Arlington National Cemetery in the United States on 26 June 2003. In Germany, their LERP is called Funspia, and basically this unit were modeled after the Finnish long-range patrols of World War II and are part of the Special Operations Division in Germany, the FSLK 200. India's Special Frontier Force is considered a long-range reconnaissance patrol are Pathfinder. Italy, historically, airborne units are normally tasked with carrying out a part of the ordinary airborne assaults, deep infiltrations within small unit reconnaissance. And the Netherlands, basically the Netherlands Marsoff Sea Squadron, consists of two special recon units, mountain leaders and special forces underwater operators. In Norway, the Norwegian Army has a LERP operation dating back to the 19th 60s, the current LERP unit, yeah, I wasn't even trying to pronounce that, who, oh, in Portugal, presently in the Portuguese army, the LERP operations are carried out by the Long Range Reconnaissance Unit of the Special Operations for Serbia, they're in the act LERP units within the Serbian Army Special Brigade and the 72nd Reconnaissance Commando Battalion have been operating since. 
1992 in the UK. The Honorable Artillery Company and its regular sister unit, the 473rd Phoenix Special Operation Post Battery, currently operate in this role. During the Second World War, the Long Range Desert Group, again, which I, I really have done extensive research on this unit because these were hitters from back in the day and performed long-range reconnaissance and raiding during the North African campaign and during the Cold War. The Corps Patrol Unit, CPU, consisted of 23 and 23rd SAS and the HAC. And last but not least, you know, when you go in alphabetical order, United States is always in the rear, but and let's face it, we're in the forefront as well. So, in the United States in World War II, the predecessor of the U.S. Army LERP teams was the U.S. 6th Army Special Reconnaissance Unit, better known as the Alamo Scouts. In the Southwest Pacific Theater of Operations, the Alamo Scouts conducted over 110 intelligence gathering missions behind enemy lines throughout New Guinea and the Philippines during 1944 and in 1945. Basically, the Alamo Scouts Training Center to train candidates in long-range reconnaissance patrol techniques, including rubber boat handling, intelligence gathering, report writing, scouting and patrolling, jungle navigation, communications, weapons training, and camouflage. Of those that successfully completed the rigorous course, 138 became full-time Alamo Scouts while the others returned to their units to serve as reconnaissance troops. After Japan's surrender, the Alamo Scouts Training Center was closed down and the unit was disbanded in 1988, though, the U.S. Army retroactively awarded members of the Alamo Scouts the Special Forces tab due to their wartime record and the techniques that they actually pioneered. And that's something else, man. When the United States Army decides that, you know what, you hitters don't got to go through C or Q school, you guys can just straight up have this SF tab. So, that right there tells you how badass these Alamo Scouts were, which I can almost guarantee you there might be 1% of you hitters out there that even know about the Alamo Scouts and that their members basically were awarded the SF tab. So, as you know, by now, we're usually into the build. But to be honest, when I start talking lurk, when I start talking Lurser, when I start talking Rasta, I don't know if you can tell, but I get fucking excited, man. Because anything that that I am passionate about, and trust me, I'm passionate about being a bad boy. Huh? But I'm also so passionate about being involved in part of this outstanding fucking history of long range reconnaissance patrol. Like, like I have footprints on the ground with reconnaissance patrols, huh? So with that being said, we're just gonna track on with a little more history, huh? So pop you another beer, another pop, grab your water, throw in another lipper, or what the fuck ever. But we're gonna keep tracking with the Vietnam lurk, huh? Okay, so I know that you guys are getting like, oh, damn, history. So all I got to put out is, is, good morning, Vietnam. Let's track. So, in December 1965, the 1st Brigade, 101st Airborne Division, uh, formed a LERP platoon. And by April 1966, the 1st Infantry Division, 25th Infantry Division, and each of the four battalions of the 173rd Sky Soldiers, uh, Airborne Brigade, shouts out to you, Pop, formed LERP units as well. On 8 July 1966, General William Westmoreland authorized the formation of a LERP unit in each infantry brigade or division in Vietnam. By 1967, formal LERP companies were organized, most having three platoons each with five to six man teams equipped with VHF, FN, AN, Prick 25 radios. 
LERP training was notoriously rigorous and team leaders were often graduates of the U.S. Army's 5th Special Forces Recondo School in Nha Trang, Vietnam. So I want to specifically talk about a unit, Tiger Force. So my dad used to talk about Tiger Force while he still had boots on ground on this earth. Huh? So Tiger Force was the nickname of a long range reconnaissance patrol unit of the 1st Battalion Airborne 327th Infantry Regiment. Huh? Uh, basically their high body counts were recognized and encouraged by military officials. Their commander, Colonel Morse, ordered troops to rack up a body count of 327 casualties in order to match the battalion's infantry designation 327. However, by the end of the campaign, soldiers were congratulated for their thousands killed. The platoon-sized unit, approximately 45 paratroopers, was founded by Colonel David Hackworth in November 1965 to out-guerrilla the guerrillas. Tiger Force Recon, 1st and the 27th, was a highly decorated small unit in Vietnam and paid for its reputation with heavy casualties, unfortunately. But in October 1968, Tiger Force's parent battalion was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation by President Lyndon B. Johnson, which included a mention of Tiger Force's service at Ijakto in June 1966. So, tracking on. Wait a second. You hitters hear that? You guys hear that? It's a damn leathernecks crime because I hadn't mentioned them in today's LERP history. So basically, the U.S. Marine Corps also performed long-range reconnaissance missions typically assigned to Marine Recon, especially that of Force Recon at core level, as opposed to the Battalion Recon units answering to Battalion Commanders. Marine Recon teams typically were twice the size as Army LERP teams and were more heavily armed. Due to the fact that they were more heavily armed, they sacrificed a degree of stealth. In addition, the Marines did not employ indigenous Montar Guards as front and rear scouts as Army LERPs and Special Forces team did, which proved invaluable in confusing the enemy if contact was made. That tactical employment of LERPs was later evaluated to be generally used far too dangerously by commanders, who were pleased by the kill ratios of LERP teams, some reports as high as 400 enemy troops for every LERP killed. That's a pretty good ratio of 400 to run. Writes one commander, during the course of war, LERPs conducted about 23,000 long-range patrols. Of this amount, two-thirds resulted in enemy sightings. LERPs also accounted for approximately 10,000 enemy KIA through ambushes, airstrikes, and artillery. So with that being said, operators on your feet! Let's uncircle the fucking wagons and get down range! Operators, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that back or select button. Let's go ahead and double tap over to load out. Hit that Yankee button and we are home to begin the build. Also, I hope you found that history interesting. I personally think it was one of my one of my best I've put out on our channel here. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and track. Head today, of course, gender male. That only way to roll. Spec op style, right? So, we're going to go ahead, gender male, face mason, eye color brown, facial hair, none. Hair, we're going to keep it squared away. Brown for the hair color, one each, and facial detail burn on the left side for yours truly here, right? SOP as far as that goes. Okay, so body details. Today, here's the deal, man. You know how I preach this. I've been preaching it forever. They don't have camo that extends down the breastplate, who? Huh? So if you're not wearing dishmag or a dust rag or a jungle rag or whatever the hell you want to call it, then you got that big pale spot right at your breastplate, huh? If you're using a gringo, and it's just ridiculous to me. So today 
we're going to go with the soup face B. Now, if you don't have that, I would suggest go with the big red one. Any one would actually fit this build. Really, the big red one actually tracks on this build a little better. However, again, if you look down towards our breastplate there, there is no camo to cover that up unless we wear, as stated, you know, our jungle rag or whatnot or the schmag or whatever you guys want to call it. Who Now... Here's the deal though. So I'm going to go ahead and put the suit face B in. As you can see, it clearly extends down to the white beater we got on. So, or the t-shirt we got on. So we're going to go ahead, hit the suit face B today. Again, if you don't have it, you can go with the big red one. Okay, right arm today, as usual, Santa Maria. Left arm today, I'm going with Mi Familia. Close. Okay, so again, we are definitely tracking with the NAM hitter today, the NAM lerp, if you will. And, uh, you know, this is almost perfect here. So, for tops today, we're going with Commando. Of course, we're going to put it in the OD Green vest again today. Now, this is something that I did buy. This would be the old school LCE, like I used to wear, actually. Now, for some reason, in, in this particular, uh, you know, it really doesn't surprise me, but... Uh, now, I'm not 100% sure, when I was in at least, when we referred to an Alice pack, we referred to our rucksack, cool? Now, do any of you hitters out there even know what the acronym Alice stands for? Huh? Go ahead and Google it. But while you're Googling it, I'll go ahead and tell you, right? I was going to make a giveaway, but, you know, I don't really do that bullshit on my channel. So I'll just go ahead and tell you an Alice referring to Alice Pack, would be all-purpose, lightweight, individual carrying equipment, which basically is an equipment attachment system, basically a rucksack, that was adopted in 1973. So, if you think about it here, we called what I have on, either LBE, load-bearing equipment, LCE, load-carrying equipment, right or it was also known as or part of our ta50 layout right that we'd have to get inspected and shit so with that being said go ahead if you have this go ahead and equip the alice but to stay true to this build i must say that this is the lbe you want who to stay with the times i mean this is perfect what's you know it's what i wore it's what the nam hitters wore obviously it's what i wore until we upgraded who so go ahead stick it in the alice or what i refer to as the lbe stick that in the 22 34 pants today we're going with the commando i mean why wouldn't we be we're not wearing the knee pads today that's what she said and we've been putting that in the 1434 olive drab as well footwear why wouldn't we we're going with the combat boots because again we try to keep it real around here and of course there's only one color you can put those in so hey we ain't got to worry about that now do we huh and we'll go ahead and keep tracking ghillie suit obviously absolutely none you know if we were doing a sniper you know we we throw that ghillie suit on so accessories today i wear we're going with none i mean Here's the thing, we could go down the list here, but to be honest, most of the picks I see, these lerps, man, they were old school. They didn't have no freaking eyewear on, right? So, we're going to go ahead and keep it real and do the same, and we'll be equipping absolutely zero. Face wear today, I would go ahead and keep it clean myself, and especially since I'm using this particular uh, face paint. However, I will tell you this, though, that if, that if you're stuck, using one of the camos the face paints that does not cover that that breastplate like we discussed then all you have to do simply is just throw on your tactical scarf i believe that's the only face wear that we should equip today staying true to the build so again tack scarf or keep it like me and go none if you're going to put the tack on obviously today we're going to pretty much just be putting everything and dressing everything out in the OD green headwear come on absolutely there's really even not even a choice we're going to go with the boonie hat today we're going to quit that in OD green now if you would like go ahead and throw billy's cap on now one thing i wish they would have enabled it to where you could turn your jungle hat sideways in when the flaps were up in this billy's hat position who because a lot of hitters back in the day and myself included to be honest at times i would go ahead and pin my flaps up and turn my hat 
pretty much sideways who so uh yeah that's what I do, and yeah, I thought that really looked high speed, and you know, that is an option for you today, but today, I'm going to go ahead and keep the flaps down, and just put it in the straight up boonie hat, make sure either one you put on again would be in the boonie hat, I mentioned before on some of my builds that we were actually authorized to sew some of our badges up on our boonie hat, I'm not 100% sure today in today's army, because let's face it, you know, I mean, no offense to those currently servants, but I, I just feel like the Army's kind of soft, right? I mean, that's that's just my personal opinion. Of course, I never had the privilege of serving with females in a fucking combat unit. So, let's go ahead with that being said. Put it in the 2234. Headsets, why wouldn't we? No headsets today. Just going with the earpiece one each hand wear today you know i was thinking and thinking about it and to be honest we're keeping it clean today now if you would like you can go ahead and wear gloves but make sure that you darken them out meaning put them in the black cool that packs today as stated in the history we're going to go ahead and put this prc 150 aka the prick 150 on again vhf that's all the hitters had back in the nan days and that's exactly what we're giving them today to stay true 100 percent so go ahead equip that prick that's what she said patches today i mean let's go i was gonna rock Oh, glory, but however, you know, since this is a LERP, even though we're taking it from the Vietnam hitter era LERP, we're going to go ahead and throw our patch on, which we haven't used in quite a while, the last roll, my peep. So, let's go ahead, equip that in the 1831, if you fall out, let's fall out rolling, who... So that's it for today's uniform. We're going to go ahead and equip it Vietnam style LERP, long range reconnaissance patrol. Okay, let's start tracking with a little bit of weaponry here. Okay, now, why wouldn't we? Of course we would. We're going to go ahead and equip the M16 today. Now, if you don't have it, I got two options for you. You can either equip the M4, but chances are, if you got the old shoddy there, then you'll have this M16. Either way, that's the only two choices I'm giving you today for the primary. So, let's go ahead and roll with the parts. Again, we're going to keep it real. We're going to go ahead, get the black on the paint scheme and go from there stock bud stock obviously because that's the only damn choice and you're going to equip that in the black scope today that's right we're going to keep it as real as we can meaning we're going to go with the stock iron sights and you're going to equip that in the one two black trigger full auto semi of course magazine that's right keeping it real going with the 30 so go ahead equip your 30 make sure that you have discipline what discipline fire control extended 31 to black under barrel hey hey let's go captain jack m203 we're gonna jack some people up with this dirt nap giver right here go ahead one two black rail keeping it clean with the rail cover just like they would one two black Standard barrel, don't even give you the option of a long barrel, and that is super okay to me. Throw that in the 2-2 gray. Muzzle today, stock muzzle, black. Don't even think about switching to a suppressor because, point of fact, they didn't run around the damn jungles of Vietnam with goddamn suppressors on. Huh? So, not saying, like, no unit over there did, huh? but basically your LERP unit would not carry a suppressor out with them. Huh? Shit. They were lucky they had the damn M16. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead, equip the stock muzzle only, not being able to pull out the suppressor. That's what she said. And we're going to put that in the one, two, black. Let's go. And that's what we're hitting the field with, the tried and true M16A1 or M16A2. Let's go. I put in a little thought with this. Today, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with the MK14. Basically, the M14. Because, point of fact is, that is exactly what the fuck they carried as well. So, we're going to go with the M14, but I'm also going to give you a little choice here. Here's the thing. I'm not even hating you, even though they didn't run around with the M4 back in the day. But you can go ahead and equip the M4 Super 90 if you you would like to. However, me, I'm going to go ahead and keep it M14 rocking and rolling. This M4 is also what you can carry if you don't have the M16. Who oh, You can carry the M4 or this M4 shoddy. Oh, don't get them confused. M4 or M4 shoddy super 90, all right? 
That's what you can carry other than the M14 or, as stated, in the primary. Go ahead. You can hook it up with the M16, A1, A2, what the fuck ever, the M4, or the goddamn shoddy. Hope. And let's go. That is a superior rifle for its time. And even to this day, multiple law enforcements are actually making... Uh, I was reading the damn... Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Hey, what's up, J-Dog, man? Nice to have you aboard. So, basically today, uh, for everybody in the stream, I think there's one or two guys out there I don't fucking know. So, basically today what we're doing, I'm, I'm trying to give you a loadout for the LERP of, you know, Vietnam era. Even though the history was on the LERP, you know, just the overall long-range constant patrol. So, with that being said, not trying to cut you off, my boy J-Dog! But we got to track on because, like I said, I got about 15 mics. Who j Dog? And again, welcome aboard, son. Okay, so with that being said, going with the big badass M14 today. And what we'll do is go ahead and dress it out. Again, keeping it real here on our channel in the subdued, right? In the black. We're going to shadow this bitch out because what? They didn't fucking run around the jungles of Nam with motherfucking goddamn golden guns and shit, right? Last I checked. These goddamn zips didn't even... Correction. I shouldn't even be calling them zips, right? Because they're fucking gooks! Last I checked, these fucking gooks in the jungle through my history. Not that I ever had boots on ground. Hell, I wish I did, right? But last I checked, the motherfuckers didn't have gold AKs out there either. Oh, let's rock it. Today, we're going with the extended bud stock, who? Oh. But, to be honest, I digress. We're going with the stock bud stock, who? Oh. So... Throw it in the stock bud stock, hit that one, two, black, and let's track. Scope. Now, here's the thing. I was sitting around thinking like, man, I, I need to keep this as real as possible. So, obviously, okay, this is the scope they used in Vietnam. Now, I'm not saying this is the only scope, but this is basically the only scope that was available to the said sniper, to the said DMR uh, team member on a LERP team, or really on any team for that fact, and that would be that of the M84, who, now I'll try to put a picture up of it during the actual video, however, the M84 scope, most people, when, when, that are really like, you know, weapon nuts and stuff, so what they'll do is they'll think of the M84, and they'll think of it on the M1 Garand, who, I went through all the scopes today, and I tried to match up the one which I felt to the M84, and this is what I came up with, right? So we're going to go ahead and put this SP scope on, right? I know it's a Chinese Army scope, but again, trying to stay with the trueness of the build, this is what we're going with, because this is basically what they went with, even though it wasn't uh, this specific site. Again, stated they went with the M84, so I just want you guys to know that before we drive on, but this is what you're going to equip, and you're going to be putting that hit the one two negro Trigger today, we're going with the semi-auto three-round burst. Leave it at that and back out. Magazine, again today, I would keep it in the 10, but you know what? For shits and giggles, we're going to go ahead and put it in the bente. And put that in the Uno Dos Black. See? Got in, got in. Under barrel again today. Keeping it as clean and keeping as real to the build as we can. Possibly can. Just throw that bitch in the rail cover. Put that. Hit. A one, two, black. Barrel today. Now, I'm not going to lie. You can throw the standard barrel on if you want. However, you know, you're trekking through, you know, the bush, man. You're trekking through jungle canopy. You know, you're sweating your fucking titties off. And, you know, here's the deal, man. Just keep that shit in the standard, right? Gives you more mobility, which is really what we're looking for. You know, you got this thing slung over. You got your either your shoddy or your 16 out, right? And it's got that extended barrel. Even though you're pointed down on the ground, man, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck your, your mojo up. You know what I'm saying? It's going to completely fuck your mojo up. So keep it in the standard barrel. One, two, black. What's going on here? And then, of course, we'll be putting this in the stock muzzle again today. Go ahead and throw it in the one, two. Today, suppressors are not authorized at all. So, if you're in this building, you're truly playing the nom lurk, do not even go to that suppressor. Just stick it in the stock, keep it in the black, and that's how we the fuck gonna go down range today. Again, the M14, uh, widely used in the nom. I know this for a fact, point of fact, I've gotten a couple of emails 
from hitters back in the day, which you saw one of them at the beginning of this video here, and he absolutely stated on my MACV build that I should have put the M14, which, as I stated to him, I really was, I mean, I was almost going to equip the M14 in that build. However, I went what I went with, and there's reasons why I went with them, and if you want to know the reasons, go ahead and click on that video about right now. Also, I wanted to state with this M14 here, it is definitely currently still in use today. I mean, you're talking a weapon that has the staying power, right? Staying power and combat fucking productivity. Unlike, there's not many that could compare, except maybe if we're talking M16. Well, so with that being said, we're going to track on. You know, I, I just really feel like this build has really come together today. Handguns, we are... And one of my favorite weapons ever, even though I have been firing a lot more of the SIG lately, I will tell you that M1911 is still my nightstand go-to. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and dress this bad boy out. Again, now, I did state uh, usually to put it in black, but for this old school fucking 45 right here, we're just going to throw it in the steel. We'll go up to parts magazine. We're going to keep it real with the 8. So the rail cover on it, nothing exciting. They didn't exactly have the technology that we have today. Huh? We're going to throw it in the standard barrel. Now the barrel is the only thing you'll be putting in gray. And then, of course, stock muzzle in the black with no option of suppressor. Huh? Yeah, that's my, that's my go-to, boys. Always will be. But I got to tell you, I'm really, really impressed. Uh, and always have been impressed, to be honest, with the SIG. The Glock. <clears throat> you know my feelings on that sidearm huh so with that being said let's fucking go ahead and track on again all this could be optional you sort of got to keep it real and to be honest i wouldn't even be using a drone if i was you like you know obviously you got to equip one but if if i was you and if you role play with me and we go out nam style lerp style then uh you know what we're gonna do is we're not even gonna have a fucking drone huh I mean, let's keep it real. And to keep it real, there's only one way to keep it real as far as I'm concerned. So, with that being said, obviously you're going to have to put on your frag grenade. And that's just going to give you a shit ton of firepower. And to be completely honest with you, you can actually unequip that 203. That is optional. I think I forgot to mention that. That is absolutely fucking optional. Because, again, your LERP, your long range reconnaissance and patrol, you're going to want to move out the least amount of weight possible. I mean, that that goes for really any fucking grunt, to be honest. You ain't trying to over-equip yourself, huh? but you don't want to leave your fucking self short either. And I can tell you that when I used to fucking pound with a 100-pound ruck, 9 times out of 10, 50% would be ammo. Because I'm telling you, I'll run out of motherfucking food, man, go into that ketosis state not even be hungry. But one thing I will not fucking run out of is goddamn death-dealing ammunition. Huh? So with that being said, go ahead, hit the frag. Of course, we're going to need our flare. And then I would go maybe C4. You know, they had tear gas back in the day. But again, to be honest, keep it real, no drone at all. Frag grenade and flare gun. That's the only three options or correction, only two options that you really have on this build. So quit being fucking cupcakes and falling out with mine, C4, diversion lures, flash grenades, drone medic, bang, 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 bang. I mean, Jesus Christ, son, how much fucking gear are you carrying, huh? So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was really, really, this is, every now and then I'll get a build that I just know a shit ton about, huh? And every now and then I get a build that I just fucking, I, I just love. The passion comes out, huh? And this was one of those builds. So with that being said, I hope you have an amazing day today. I hope tomorrow's amazing. I hope yesterday was amazing. Tell all your friends about my channel. Go ahead. Why don't you one time? Snipe like, snipe, sub, cuz. That's how we roll. Dreaming big town is small and it's going down all I need is a microphone I'm headed for the crown y'all call me wax Let's go man they don't like the radio they hand me the speak I'm on these tracks just like Thomas I'm the truth just being honest y'all a bunch of Martin and Anthony's yeah that's prima donnas wait ready they know the deal and the sinister show is scary I'm on these tracks just like Thomas I'm the truth just being honest y'all a bunch of Martin and Anthony's yeah that's prima donnas wait ready they know the deal and the sinister show is scary
skill Way that I just go at will You can call me Uncle Phil You working but I work harder To the day of Mr. Carter My girl yeah, the is me, Mrs. Larder and Mrs. Carter And I'll never dumb it down I guess what I just fit is smarter I'm a master of my trade No, I won't forget the butter You know I won't forget it Hey, when it comes to life You know I won't regret it Yeah, I'll say that shit simple and plain If you thinking I'ma change Well, you must be insane, motherfucker